What's going on? Where are we? Oh. Somewhere else again. We're on a mission again. Mission. Yeah. Oh, slab end. mission. <laughs> slab strike mission. <laughs> <laughs> it's just never going to end. Is it ever going to end? You know, like it. the southern hemisphere is just, just been get up. rest a couple of days <laughs> and go again. It's 3.33 this morning. I mean, I don't know where I am. I found my mate's jet ski, my good friend. I've been making tow boards for a long time. And uh, we got it going, so... <laughs> it's all happening. I can't believe it. The things we do on surface, the chase waves. But it Thanks works, right. and we got a ski, which is really yes. imperative for this oh. wave. You know, so... Fuck. Yeah. So all this wave. Yeah. So, oh. And the sea starts. Oh. I was just like, So we, we kind of got slightly lost. We were doing a little um, sneaky kind of uh, back road detour. And uh, yeah, we're on the other side. I think we're going in the right direction. We can see a headland in the distance and there's cars on the headland. So I think we're going in the right direction. <laughs> it's going back in summer. <laughs> You wouldn't want to be here in much rain, would you?
I got like probably some of the best ride of my life that's for sure that's sure for sure like this wave a way more scary than all the slab I surf until like today like way more scary than chops and then more scary than Luna has all, all the slabs why, why why so scary what's it that makes you feel like you know it's not a it's huge like, wave it's just it's like thick perfect but fuck it's super shallow and the wave sucks so much you feel it if you fall like you you can see it's like super shallow and it's not like five foot or six foot you know and like it's a couple of feet huh? you can see but you, you, you see the bottom you can see the bottom like when the when there are no waves and you cross the peak yeah you see straight the, the all the reef it's like super scary but I'm super happy. rewarding, huh? Yeah, I'm more than stoked because it was same one of my dreams to surf this wave. <laughs> but I, for what you see on the footage, on the clips, and when you are here, it's like completely different. Like the wave is way more gnarly than what you are expecting. Way more. I'm so like sh sh and all the, all the guys here, they surf, they paddle, they surf. They enjoy, pff, doesn't matter, they get waves. Like, full, full, full respect to all these guys.
did you ever expect it to be like, I mean, there's a lot going on, but today was actually pretty darn exciting. Yeah. Hard so, work though. Not, not easy to definitely. get Definitely. We paddled for two or three hours and didn't get a single wave. Like, no waves what? ridden, so. Was it what, that difficult? Yeah, it was just, what was happening was the water was like surging over the reef like crazy. And so you'd think you're right in the spot and then you'd be 15 foot away from the spot. And it was just moving and surging and going so dry and mutant. And even like a few of like the guys that have been down here a few times, the body wars were like, oh, this is like, this is just fucked to paddle. And so we kind of tried and tested and looked and went left on a few to get out away from it. And like, oh. Finally, Kip came back out. Oh, so much water coming out. Grabbed the rope and just towed like five mental ones. And after that, I was like, he's like, you're next. I was like, yep, on. Made the whole day worth it. Sometimes you just, just got to get very necessary to be on the rope. And then I ended up getting like my first wave was just worth the whole trip. You couldn't have paddled that. Yeah. <laughs> so scary. Should have been like on a tow. And then that wave, tell us about that wave. You actually... I just, I was on my 6'4", so it was like the rail wasn't holding and I just started sliding down the face a little bit. Had to like put my hands on the face and I was like, just thinking about Kip telling me, you should take my tow board. And I was like, no, I'll take my paddle board. I was like, maybe I made a huge decision, a huge like mistake. And then it just turned out all right. I doggy doored it. I'd try to get out of um, Tassie and see if I could try slide into something else but it's yeah it's a pretty sick place where we are and nothing like back home <laughs> <laughs> certainly not shippies no it's a long way from Stan yeah. did feel good being able to tow into a wave and not looking for a step though yeah, you got a couple thank god to Jerome putting in the spot yeah Jerome good whipper yeah. um just end of the day like only people everyone else had had enough paddlers are all out we we're the only ski out there and managed to try slide down into some and <laughs> Just got lucky with a couple that they didn't hit me as hard as I thought and then ate it on a couple, but you know how it is.
So what happened, mate? You uh, had a little incident in the ocean there, mate. Yeah, man. I, I, I got Jerome into some really good ones, so I was stoked. And then it was kind of, the swell was kind of peaking, but um, I felt I had a, everything everything dialed and um, just went a big one. And I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, I think I could go. And just went, I just want to go down the step, down the step. And the thing, I don't know, it just kind of went mutant and um, I tried to ride it out and then I, I just fell, like it bottomed out and, and I was in a really bad spot. And I, uh, I, I went over in the worst spot possible and uh, I was like, oh my God, this is like worst, worst case scenario. And then I just got sucked over in the worst position and got um, pretty much impaled on my, uh, my chest here. And uh, yeah, I just got winded and yeah, I've got like a concave in my chest now. <laughs> just gotta, yeah, get it checked out. So. Yeah, you kind of thought everything was okay until you got back to Sydney. So tell us what happened when you yeah, got home. Yeah, so, so pretty much I, I had a, I had a wipeout, you know, and, and surfing these ways, we can have a wipeout. I've been doing this for a long time, but it, it was a one-off and I, I just hit the bottom and I hit a hard on my, there and I thought it was, I thought I may have cracked my sternum or broke my, fractured my ribs. I didn't think any were. Yeah, so when, when, I got, when I got home, I went to the doctors and they could um, fill bubbles, so straight to hospital and, and then pretty much done x-rays and they said I got four broken ribs and a punch of lungs. And I couldn't believe it, I, I, you know, I was in shock. I was like, what, you serious? So yeah, and then the ordeal started and then they had to put a tube in to, to drain all the, the blood out and, and um, inflate my lung. And did the doctor tell you that it was very dangerous to fly with a punctured lung? Yes, the doctor said, you know, it was dangerous to fly like that. Um, but I, I was handling my pain and I thought I was safe and I just want to get home to my family. And um, yeah, I just, I've had fractured ribs. I've done out snapper before and um, cartilage and ribs and, and I just let them go, you know, I healed. So I just thought it was the same. So for me, it's all surfing's dangerous, but um, everything's dangerous. Like walking down the street, my mate, my mate was jogging last year and got run over by a car. Everything's dangerous, but we're calculated. And, you know, we take the risk, but we're very experienced. For me, at my age, I'm, this is definitely, this, I've slowed down, this is it for me. Um, but now I've got my daughter Summer, so it's all about his, his training, getting strong, and being prepared. I work with guys like Pro Guarding now, and um, it's more about safety now, we're professionals. Not like the olden days, we just go, and so, so yeah, we're taking it serious these days.